him to another muscle-sapping, energy-crunching hour of strength and stamina, Britain's strongest man. And as always, helping me out with that hour, six foot two inches of tribute to clean living, great champion, Henry Cooper. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. I am great. Do you have any at 5 feet 9 inches, weighing 21 stone, Highland Games champion shot putter and weightlifter, Hamish Davidson. From Romsey in Hampshire, 6 feet 20 stone, the man nicknamed the Human Crane, Gary Winterbank. No stranger to this contest, from Crystal Palace in London, 5 feet 11 inches and 18 stone, weightlifter, Stephen Zetolovsky. Spalding in Lincolnshire, former Olympic shot putter and Europe's strongest man, 1980, at six feet five, weighing 22 and a half stone, former winner of the contest, Jeff Cakes. <laughs> from Crawley in Sussex, flown in from San Diego University in California, another winner of the contest, discus thrower at six feet seven inches, weighing 20 stone, Richard Slaney. From Lewisham in London. National League hammer thrower and former Royal Marine Commando at six feet three, weighing 20 stone 10, John Sedge. <laughs> Last of the eight from Folkestone in Kent, a judo black belt and powerlifter at six feet four inches, weighing 19 stone, Marvin McClatchy. So there you have it, the eight contestants uh, who'll be competing for this magnificent trophy. Prize money of more than a thousand pounds, but most important of all, that title of Britain's strongest man. So what's going to happen? Well, we've got seven events for them, seven very tough ones, too. There's eight points for a first at each event, seven for second, six for third, right down to one point for eighth place. Now, at the end of the seven events, the four leaders in the points table will then take part in a tug-of-war. And it's from that tug-of-war that we'll find out who's going to become Britain's strongest man. Look at us, Hope and Royal. I mean, that's the names of the two shower horses that normally pull these drays all around London. But in this event, uh, we replace uh, the horses with men because uh, they're going to be pulling it down this 30-meter course, and it's obviously the fastest man that wins. You know, Henry, do you know anything about uh, these drays at all? Not a lot. <laughs> but I know, unladen, these, this weighs over a ton. Now, we're going to load it with enough barrels so it's going to weigh two ton, eight underweight, or 11,648 kilos. Always brings his sums with him. Yeah. Now, what about the barrels? Uh, what about the weight in each of those barrels? Well, they hold plenty of beer, I tell you. Each barrel weighs, or holds, 36 gallons, or... 288 pints. So now you know. Okay, well that's uh, putting a new twist to the phrase, shifting the ale. And uh, we're going to see them do just that as we sit back and enjoy the dray pull. Heat one. Hamish Davison versus Richard Slaney. The Scot tipped to do well here. He's already beaten Jeff Capes in a competition earlier this year. And Richard Slaney, the biggest man in the contest and a past winner. Hands off the floor, please. Watch the time, and it's Slaney who gets away first. But as the tallest competitor, he might find it a problem to keep the momentum going. Davidson stocky. And indeed, he's picked up on Slaney halfway down the course. And it's Davidson getting the momentum, coming towards that finishing line. A good time. Davidson wins. 37 and a half seconds we made. That was a pretty fast time to start with, Hamish. Hey, are you happy with the way that went? Yes, I think so. I got a pretty slow start, but I managed to keep going after that. Being the legs... low to the ground, do you think that may have helped you? I think the leg strength helped me. Well, Richard, you've done this last year. Does it get any easier? <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Still is out on the legs, is it, in the back? Yeah. Heat two, Winderbank versus Sedge. And that looks like the bulk there of Gary Winderbank, the human crane. And there's John Sedge, former commando, very determined. Twenty-seven and a half seconds to beat. And it's Winderbank who seems to have the slower start. Notice that upright stance. And that, as we remember from the past, is always a disadvantage. And it's indeed John Sedge who's away and going well. Big man who trains around Crystal Palace with Peter Tancred pulling a Citroen car. And today, pulling that tray, he's going to get a good time here. Well done. 
Where'd you find that most painful? On the old legs or the back or all over? Yeah, I've got, uh, got a knee injury on Monday. Yeah. Uh, both knees. Yeah. And, uh, PJ's done a good job on them. Yeah, yeah. Because you're what, an ex Marine, are you? Yeah. Yeah, so you've never done anything like this in the Marines before, no. eh? Not that you didn't pull a tank or anything like that, or? Uh, only, uh, we used to pull uh, sledges. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Norway. that's something like uh, an harness, like what you got on there. Yeah, similar. Yeah. But yeah. They want so heavy as this. Heat three. Marvin McClatchy versus Jeff Capes. McClatchy, the judo black belt. Capes, a proven champion. Come on! Twenty-seven and a half seconds to beat. And Capes has done this a number of times now. And that twenty-two and a half stone, pulling those drays away very quickly indeed. Marvin's struggling a little. He's got three and a half stone of a disadvantage here. And now it's almost a run. It's almost a run from Jeff Capes to the line. Watch that time. And he's going to be well inside it. Under, under 25 seconds, I made that there, so you're the leader at the moment. How, how does that compare to pulling a truck from last, from last time? About the same. It isn't... Uh, well, it it's roughly about the same. Um, I'm not quite, not quite sure which would be the easier. It runs pretty freely once you got going. Uh, but they're all hard. The last heat, Steven Zedolovsky versus Peter Tancred, the Joker there, always with a smile on his face. And Tancred from a famous family. Well, can anybody possibly beat that time? Zedolovsky was doing this last year. And he is uh, plodding away there pretty well. Pretty determined looking. But I don't think he's going to beat the time. Tankford's got a lot less weight. Only 18 stone. And here's Zedolovsky with all that power, the weightlifter. He's going to win easily. But as you can see, outside 25 seconds. The winner, Zedolovsky. Well done, Steve. How are you? Ah, oh, getting older. Yeah, yeah. You look as though you lost a bit of weight. Yeah, gone down a stone in a bit. Stone in a bit, eh? Yeah. So, what, you hope to do better or what? Because you were not? third last year, weren't you? Yeah, maybe I was carrying a bit too much excess weight. First blood to Jeff Capes and the Draypool, eight points. Davidson with seven, John Sedge, six. Richard Slaney, five. Gary Winderbank, four. Marvin McClatchy, three. Steve Zadolowski, two. And Peter Tancred, one. Right now, the wheelbarrow race. Now, the wheelbarrow race is rather interesting. They go up this course, 30 metres, to those bollards at the bottom, and back down again. It's a speed trial, so to speak. Four two-man heats. And uh, the two fastest will then run off at the end. Now, they'll be pushing these, our famous wheelbarrows. Uh, these have, a, what, 300 kilos. That's about 660 pounds of weight, or roughly four fully grown men is what they're going to be pushing on this speed trial. So there you have it, the wheelbarrow race. Heat one. Gary Winderbank versus Marvin McClatch. Winderbank, the tractor driver from Hampshire, versus the trailer driver from Folkestone. And Winderbank's well away. Problems already for McClatchy. Winderbank, well away. 20 stone. Getting round those bollards, and indeed, we look as if McClatchy has given up. He's uh, had a problem with that unstable barrel. And it's going to be an easy victory now for Gary Winderbank. Go, go, go! What happened to Marvin, then? Marvin, what happened there? No, just as the bounce forward, just, the whole thing just tipped forward. But I think um, your trouble seemed to start right from yeah, the first yeah. uh, shot because I think you slipped on the... Um, slightly to one side the weight. You know, yeah. On the right-hand side of the wheel, but... Yeah. Um, and then it, she, the barrel, what, completely just tipped yeah, just what, forward. forward? went the yeah. weight went forward, yeah. did it? I think yeah. I got the balance wrong. Yeah. Completely wrong. Well, we made that about uh, just under 23 seconds, Guy, which wasn't too bad. A little not bit of a catastrophe. <laughs> You're not that old. A bit of a catastrophe for your, for your fellow competitor there. But uh, that didn't uh, seem to do you any harm, that one. Not too bad at all, really. But easier than what I expected. Heat two. Hamish Davidson versus Stephen Zedolovsky. Davidson, cool, determined. Stephen, always a little smile there, yes. On your mark. 
but it's Davidson getting that low subject of gravity. Struggling there, Zedlovsky. And he's had a problem. Something's gone wrong with Zedlovsky. He's limping away off the course. He seems to have torn something in his leg. And Davidson once again makes this heat a one-horse race. An easy victory, but Zedlovsky looks in terrible pain there. A win for Davidson. What's happened? Let's find out. Henry's over there with Zedlovsky. Well, that's used to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, golf, eh? Yeah. Mm. Well, that's the end of that, then. Fun I was doing ever so well, You well. were saying you were having a bit of trouble with your knees. You didn't well, expect to have this on top. No, it's the other knee, funnily enough. Now I've got one to go with it. Well, you've got a pair, man. Yeah, I've got a matching pair. Well, holy holy. How was that one for you? I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Oh, really? I know. It's well, a bit time shitty. is better, you know. You're, you're, you're inside the time. Yeah, well, we'll see. I didn't expect to do well on this one. That's my worst event. Heat three. Peter Tancred versus Richard Slaney. Tancred, number two in the discus in this country, behind this man, of course, Richard Slaney, a former winner of the contest. Richard! And they're both away together. Though so Tancred seems to be wobbling just a little. He is the lighter man, after all. But they're still up together round those bollards. And Tancred now has had a bit of a catastrophe. And once again, it's not so much a race, but a procession to the line for Richard Slaney in this case, and a very fast time. Watch that clock. A fast time indeed. Meanwhile, Tancred is not going to be put off. He's determined to finish this course. He comes from a famous athletic family, his father, elder brother, all athletes, and of course, there's a competitive instinct there, determined to finish. And he's got that 660 pounds back onto the track. He's pushing off to the line. You can hear the, the shouts of the fellow competitors pushing him on there to that line. Good points, remembering that two men already are out. So these are valuable points, Peter Tancred. But we think that Slaney's time is very fast. The second fastest so far. What about uh, Peter Tancred, though? I know, annoying that. Well, uh, again, unfortunately, I think perhaps you were a little ginger, uh, you know, thinking gingerly about that because of what happened previously. I was a bit, uh, obviously put off having seen the... <coughs> the gash of uh, Steve. Uh, it's a little bit tentative in my approach, but uh, my concentration went, and I should have had a little bit lower. The last of the four heats, Jeff Capes versus John Sedge. Capes, psyched up as always. Sedge, keen to beat Mr. Capes. This man is a remarkable athlete in every way. He can run 100 meters in just over 10 seconds, and he's sprinting along there, forgetting about that weight. Well ahead now, and running towards the line. And look at the time again. 18, 19, 20 seconds, roughly. And Sage, he's through as well. There are just over 20 seconds, so you clip two seconds off that. Um, why do you think they've been having problems? I don't know, just the look at the draw, I think some of them have been lifting the bar a little bit too high. But the thing is, when you're competing, you just forget everything and try and get in the most comfortable position. The most comfortable is there. But because of the, the front struts, if you lift it too high, that's what's been catching on the ground. Now, second to you, and the man who's going to be up against you now in the final is Hamish. Now, you know Hamish rather well. Yeah. You've competed together quite a lot. What about this remarkable Scott? He's only five foot nine. He's a dark horse. <laughs> the final of the wheelbarrow race. Jeff Capes and Hamish Davidson, two old competitors. But one thinks that Capes is competitiveness. He's never been beaten, for instance, in the shot put in Britain for 10 years. That's going to carry him through. Davidson's still doing well. And indeed, it's Jeff Capes. The big shot, as his book tells us, winning here. Comfortable time. Well, it was a good run again, Amish, but what, just not quite fast enough. No, I think I'm Jeff a bit, was... uh, stiff now. I think I've... Uh... Yeah, <laughs> well, it just a bit. stiffens up a bit. Yeah, almost it? cramping there. Is it? Uh, oh, yeah. You're happy with the position so far, then? Yes, very much so. Um, slightly tired, but uh, quite pleased. Now, this is the second time you competed in the British version. Yes. And uh, you would say it's tougher than the, 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 the first occasion? Oh, very much so. I think uh, 
to be respectful to a lot of the lads they're probably the best available at the present time whereas before in the early days when we was experimenting they selected one or two lads that weren't quite capable of keeping with the more of an of an athlete but now they've got the best in the business two events two victories jeff capes eight points but two seconds as well for hamish davidson with seven richard slaney six gary winderbank five john sage four peter tankard three steve zadolowski and marvin mcclatchy both with two points in the wheelbarrow race and after two events jeff capes leads by just two points from hamish davidson richard slaney is third john sage is fourth gary winderbank fifth then comes Marvin McClatchy, Steve Zadolowski and Peter Tankard. And we're told that Steve Zadolowski may have to retire. He's gone off to hospital with that nasty leg injury. So we think he's out of the event. Two events gone. Still very close on that scoreboard, as you can see. And one competitor out, Steve Zadolowski, with the injury. But we trust he'll be all right before too long. Seven competitors left then for our car lift here inside Battersea Town Hall. An ordinary uh, family saloon car, as you can see, about 2,000 pounds in weight. And to it, we've attached a beam at the back. And that beam, of course, uh, will enable these uh, lifters uh, to, to lift quite a lot, about 800 pounds to start with. And we'll add more weight into the boot. And it should get up to quite a lot. Henry, last year, this actually broke, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's quite right, Doug. I believe the weld went, and uh, it was quite nasty at one time. But uh, I think this event is going to suit the short, stocky guys who haven't got too far to lock out their legs. Yeah. Actually, I think you'd be good at this uh, event, Derek. <laughs> Thank you very much, Henry. <laughs> All right, let's get on with the car lift. Round one, first lifter, Jeff Capes. Come on, Jeff. Come on, Jeff. Jeff Capes coming in, and you can see the weight. Prepare to lift. Those knees. It's a good one. Yes, a good one for Kate. Next to go, Peter Tancred. Be fair to lift. Lift. Down. Almost feel the weight. Lift. But he's through as well. And Richard Slaney. Looking on, he'll have a turn in a moment. Meanwhile, he's watching Gary Winderbank here have his turn. I wonder whether he'd like to be back on the farm again, as opposed to picking cars up. Oh, oh well, I think he's done his back in, and he's, he's up. Yes, he's gone. Richard Slaney, who did very well in this last time. Britain's strongest man in 1980, second in Europe's strongest man as well. And it's very easy, isn't it, if you've got that technique. John Sedge. Now, Sedge, not so many years ago, did his back in completely. In a, a parachute accident, he broke his back. But he says it's all right now, and he's determined to go in this event. John! <laughs> Well, he may have been determined, but it's not going to happen. He's out as well. What's the tennis? What are you going to try? Lock your legs out first, oh, or try to straighten your back? Yeah, it's in flat back. Is it? Yeah, that's the technique, back. is it? Yeah. To get the back straight. You get the back locked out, yeah. and then get the legs moving, you're yeah. right. Right, yeah. You just can't get it going. Yeah. It's heavy. Marvin McClatchy next to go. His father was a weightlifter. I wonder whether he's passed on any advice here. Look at those feet, size 13. <laughs> Big lad. Lift. And yes, I think he's locked. He's locked now. That's a good one. So he'll go on. Well, that was a good lift. Uh, I didn't think he was going to do it at first. So how did he go? All right, it's, uh... When you first take it, it moves easy, and all of a sudden it comes at the whole way of the car, like, you know, because of the springs. But once you get it to about there, it's easy enough. Hamish Davidson. Remarkable appetite this man's got. It's all sorts of things. Two pounds of steak, two pounds of fish, pints and pints of milk and lager, and it all works. <laughs> Five feet nine and 21 stone, he's through also. 
We're into round two now, an extra 44 pounds added, bringing it up to 338 kilos. Peter Tankford. Well, he was a bit worried about his lack of sheer weight for this contest. And this is where it tells. And he's decided that he's gonna pull out. Marvin McClatchy, the European Judo Championships, very much in his sights at the moment. He wants to get to the Olympics too. He's also something of a powerlifter, holding the Southern Counties Under-23 and Kent Seniors title. But there's an awful lot of weight here. He fails, so three men only through now, and uh, surprisingly, Richard Staley is opted out, and I wonder why that is. Well, really, it's my worst event, because I'm the tallest of all the competitors, and um, I've got a few problems with my lower back, and like, when you're bent over it, you're just pulling back with your back, it's just not worth the risk of injury. More weight coming in, round five, and only two men left, and uh, that's one of them. Indeed, it's the two men who top the table at the moment, Jeff Capes, Davidson to follow. Oh, I think he's, he's not going to do it again. He's walked away. He's going to reserve his strength for later. So it's all up to Davidson now. If he lifts this, it's victory and eight points. Lift. I get the feeling you could have lifted a bit more there. Well, there's no way I'm going to lift more. I've no I'm a you could have. about me at all. That's the art of doing something for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do they say about the Scots? Hamish Davidson, a winner this time. Capes in second place. Richard Slaney third. Then comes Marvin McClatchy and Peter Tankard on five points. Windebank and Sedge on three. And that means it's very much tighter now at the top of the main scoreboard. As you can see, Capes has just a one-point lead over Hamish Davidson. Richard Slaney is back there in third place, and there's a battle going on for fourth. A very close contest, then, and just three events gone, much more to play for. You can find out what's happening in a few minutes' time. We'll also have a brand new event in this contest called the battery lift, and that really is strong. Very difficult thing to do. The battery lift, then, coming up after this break. Back then to Battersea Town Hall, and we're ready now for a new event, at least in the British version of this contest, the battery hold. 55 pounds. Oh. 55 pounds. You may have seen this in the world version last year. Henry, you'd probably like to tell us about this. Well, I think this event is a real killer. This is a real strength and determination. You've got to hold that. You've got to have your back against the board. You've got to hold it out there, and you've got to... It's killer, you know, this oxygen starvation and muscles, it's going to be shaking, but yet you've got to blow all that out of your mind and you've got to still hold it and still keep going. It's a real killer. This, I think, is the toughest one of the lot, and I think that uh, the one who wins this is going to be a real strong, tough... Enough. The battery hold. Hamish Davidson, first to go. This Scott has been up a great performance so far. As Jeff Cape said, the dark horse in the contest, two seconds and a first. That's his record up to date. He's competed in the UK, as well as in Canada and Nigeria, where Cape's beat him there. But of course, Jeff suffered a defeat at the hands of Davidson not so very long ago. Remember, they've got to keep that battery up, because if it comes down too far, it will break the buzzer and they'll have to stop. Davidson going well, over 30 seconds now. Gary Winderbank. He'll be following him very soon. The sheep and mink farmer from Nairn in Scotland having a great contest up to date. 43, 44, great performance from Hamish Davidson. Just five feet nine, but 21 stone, and it's getting closer, and there it is. 52 or thereabouts for Hamish Davidson. What's, what's the technique of this? Uh -huh. Uh, it's, it's just holding it outright and uh, try to tense up the leg muscles and put the strain on the bigger muscle groups of the body. 
It helps you if you want to just get your head and your back against that ball, yeah. does it? Yeah, it's hard against it, is it? Yeah, yeah. And I see, in the end, there's a lot of shaping going on. Yeah. That's how it gets you, does it? Yeah. We try to do a little thin body. Yeah. I think yeah. some sweet doesn't come up. Yeah. Gary Winterback suffering here and, oh, exhausted at around 36-37. Peter Tankred next. He's had a reasonably good contest up to date, despite his lack of weight. He's proved how good a competitor he is. 29 seconds there, he's through 30. The school teacher from London obtained his master's degree in America. He returned here in May last year from the States. And he's coming to it, the conclusion, yes. An exhausting 48, 49 seconds. John Sedge. John Sedge, who works in the building trade. He's the sort of man you need in if you're doing a, a damp course in your house. He's working around Bromley and Lewisham in London. He took up athletics about 15 years ago. And this must be one of the strongest events he's done. It really murders those arm muscles. And he's coming down there at 33 seconds. Marvin McClatchy is next. Marvin from Folkestone works for Sea Link, pulling trailers on and off ferries. And remember that important time, that amazing time from Hamish Davidson to start? 52 and a half seconds. Well, he's only halfway there, and he's looking exhausted. Despite all that training, he gives up at 32. Now, our next competitor, Jeff Capes. He knows what he has to beat. The eyes are closed, concentrating all the time. 52.44 to beat. Jeff Capes, a marvellous competitor in the World Championships last year for Britain. Finished third then. I wonder what he'd do this year if he managed to get there. 35 seconds, can he beat 52? It's getting closer to that trigger. Is he gonna trigger the buzzer? He is, yes, at 43 seconds. Jeff, the first time you did that was in America, didn't you? I mean... Yeah, I don't find that very easy at all. One of the most difficult things, probably because uh, I've got hellishly long arms and long leverage. You know, it's a long way out there. And on a shorter guy, it's, the leverage is far less, obviously, but uh, not one of my best events, I'm sorry. <laughs> Richard Slaney, the last to go. He's spending a lot of his time in America now. He's also become something of a, an expert in American football. He's an awful lot of training. He sees that time. He knows he's got to get eight points. He's behind. He's six or seven points behind the two leaders. He needs a victory. 52 and a half seconds to beat. Watch it now. Let's cut it down. 43, 44, 45, 6 or 7 seconds, 48, 9, 50, so close, 51. Has he got there? No, he hasn't. Hamish Davidson wins by one second from Richard Slaney. Peter Tancred is third and Jeff Capes fourth. After a slightly slow start, Hamish, you're picking up a lot of points. Yeah, well, this is coming into my better events now. I don't know about this uh, steel bar bend. I'm still a bit worried about it. But what did you think of that, of what you just did? Uh, I could have stuck it out longer, perhaps, if I was the last man to go, but having to set the first time is a bit more difficult. So after four events, a new leader, Hamish Davidson, leads by two points from Jeff Capes. Richard Slaney is in third place. John Sedge and Gary Winderbank joint fourth. Halfway through the show, and it's very close, isn't it? Really very close it indeed. Very close. What, what's the next? What, what's the, what's well, it's all about this, though. Bending bars. You get them round the back of your neck like that, and you hope to bend them. Ladies and gentlemen, what about that? Look at that. What's not? <laughs> not quite eight inches apart. It, well, no, it may be eight no, inches apart. No, not, but that's what the competitors have to do. They're going to bend these bars to within eight inches. And we'll start at 10 millimeters like Henry, go up to 13 and a half and maybe beyond. They can use the top of their heads, the back of their necks, their teeth, but nothing else. So that's what you're going to see. You did rather well. Let's see what oh. they do in the bar bend. 
So as before, seven competitors left, four in this heat. It's 13 and a half millimeters uh, in the bar band. Sedge, Capes, Winderbank, and Davis. And of course, Jeff Capes is an expert at this event. He's picked up points all the way, and Hamish Davidson is the leader. John Sedge is at a good contest. Gary Winterbank is fading just a little now. He perhaps doesn't have the regular training that these other athletes have. Davidson and Cape seem to have gone through pretty quickly. There's John Sedge, 31 years of age. Gary Winterbank, he says he's the oldest in this contest, but he's done well enough. Sedge, the ex commando who really damaged himself a few years back when he was working in the services Gary Winderbeck finding it just a bit too tough 8 inches 20 millimeters that's the distance they have to push that bar to to survive for another round Very important to pick up points now. They're pretty far down the scoreboard. And time is up. So they go up. And Kicks and Davidson go through. The second heat. Just Slaney, McClatchy, and Tankard. Richard Slaney, Peter Tankard. A good contest for him. And Marvin McClatchy, the judo expert. And McClatchy seems to have done that. And so has Slater, having problems removing it from the apparatus. There's three men through. So five men go off. Right, it's Jeff Capes and Hamish Davidson at 15 millimeters. Davidson with lots to prove, leading the contest, and that won't please this man. But wasn't that easy? In no time at all, he bent the bar to the right level, and Davidson is suffering now. Hamish Davidson having a marvellous contest here, his first ever attempt at Britain's strongest man. Scottish bench squat and deadlift champion twice. Turned professional three years ago and a real Highland Games expert. But this event is beyond him and Capes looks as if he's going to pick up points and perhaps take over the lead. We'll see. Nope. Davidson goes. 108.2 centimeters, so capes through. Now then, Slaney, who needs points, McClatchy and Tankard. Look at the way that Slaney's bending that bar. Not quite the 20 centimeters yet, but very close. there a long way to go for Tancred I think Slaney's made it yes that's okay McClatchy Martha McClatchy the judo black belt who's done very well up to now they all need points won't bend anymore. So then, Slaney goes on, McClatchy and Tancred go out, and we've reached the final. Capes and Slaney. A Capes, Britain's strongest man two years ago, Slaney last year. Stopping it, 
seems. Or is he? He thinks he's bent that bar a long way more than uh, Slaney could possibly manage it. He stopped, he's looked. He decided that Slaney won't beat that. <laughs> Slaney checks and keeps going. But no, Capes looks assured. He feels he'll get eight points here. And I think Slaney agrees. <laughs> so, it's Capes the winner and Slaney is second. A marvellous performance from Jeff at 17 millimetres in the bar bend. And very valuable eight points. Slaney is second. Davidson, third. Tancred, fourth. Marvin McClatchy is fifth. Gary Winderbank in there. And then John Sedge. And look at the scoreboard. Davidson and Capes are tied after five events. Slaney is third, and Peter Tancred fourth. A marvellous finish in prospect. Just two events to go before that tug of war, and the next one, well, it's something of a backbreaker. It's all to do with the arms and the legs. Uh, Henry, Henry, Henry. Well, I've just been telling the girls about this next event. It's a real backbreaker, this one, and it's all in the arms and legs. It's not to do with their back and legs, you know. Oh. Not theirs. They sit on the gotcha. beam. They sit on this. Gotcha. This is the girl lift, you see. And these lights will be flashing on and off. There's 500 kilos here that they're lifting without the girls. Then we put on two girls. That adds up to 580. And then we go on and on and on until perhaps we'll see all ten of them for the girl lift. With all ten bunnies now on that beam, a massive total weight of 1,032 kilos. And it's this man, Hamish Davidson, to go first, the joint leader. 50. One light goes, but not the other. And he isn't even bothering to try it again. He's decided that's enough. Marvin McClatchy. Peter Tankwood already has gone out of this event as Marvin McClatchy comes in next. 14. Now, whatever one thinks, uh, this okay. judo black belt has done extremely well up to now. One hand goes there, but not the other. And one light, correspondingly. But all that strain doesn't matter, he's out. So McClatchy, he's on his way as we wait for John Sedge to have a go. Fear to lift, your own time, lift. Six feet three and 20 stone 10, a big man, John. Come on, John. Push up. And he and Peter Tankard are great mates. They've trained a lot together, but all the training doesn't matter because here, the strength is gone. Richard Slaney. Right. Now, I remember Ready? Richard from last year winning this event. Lift. He seems to enjoy it. Six. And both hands Undone. go straight up. He's through. Could this be eight points that he desperately Six. needs? Gary Winderbeck. Human crane is wilting somewhat now. He is the oldest man in the contest, and he seems to have done himself a terrible injury there. Right. And there are people coming in to help him, and even the competitors look worried. And Gary has to be taken away. The back seems to have locked, and he seems to have damaged muscles as well. So Gary leaves the event, and we hope that he can continue. Jeff Capes is next. Joint leader with Hamish Davidson. Come on, come on. One hand, but not the other. He strained his back a little, but I'm sure he'll be all right. He's not going to test it any further. He's out. And that means that Richard Slaney wins it. And uh, in joint second place, we have Capes and Davidson, Sedge, McClatchy and Winderbank. And it's Peter Tancred there with two points in the girl lift. And after six events now, it's still a tie. Davidson and Capes on 43, Slaney in third place in 39, but there's still a heck of a battle for fourth. So Scotland versus England, a tie with just two events left. The barrel lift to come, you'll be able to see that in just a moment's time. Very familiar event on Britain's Strongest Man. And then our tug of war to decide on who'll be Britain's Strongest Man 1981. Don't go away.
the final stages of Britain's Strongest Man 1981, and a very close contest it is. Just this event, and then the tug of war for the top four point scorers. Now, these barrels are 70 kilos to start with. That's about 154 pounds. It's all got sand and water inside there sloshing about. They lift them above their head, lock their elbows for two seconds, and then down. And we'll increase the weight, and it goes on and on and on. The barrel lift. And it's Gary Winterbank, the first to have a go at the 70-kilo barrel. But remember, he's already got a problem after that girl lift with that back of his. In fact, the physiotherapist has been working on him there. And we wonder whether or not he really can continue. Gary Winterbank. So let's see how he does here in the barrel lift. Lift! And he's managed it. One, two, go! Well, that's a very game effort. But it seems to have drained all his energy. And it appears that Gary won't be continuing. 110 kilos. Five men left. John Sedge is already out. And this is Richard Slaney, who still has a chance to win. Again, an event he did very well in last year. Notice that rolling technique. It's up, but is it good? He sustained it. And it's a good one. Richard Slaney goes off. Hamish Davidson. Well, the dark horse he may have been at the start, he's proving what a super competitor he is, and that was very easy. Seems to expend no energy there at all. Well, we've said so much about him over the years. And I think that now he, he sees the contest so close he may very well pull out another gear and show how good a competitor he really is. On he goes. Marvin McClatch. A 21-year-old. 19 stone. 6 foot 4. Chest 50 and waist 36. There's a bit more information about this man. The strength is gone from him. 110 was what? Just a little bit too much, eh? So, the last all breaks the camel's back. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's done. But you've done well. That was... Uh... Yeah, I was pleased with the 100 kilo. Yeah, yeah, because that's... Pleased. This is not... Well, not your game, really, is it? This power lift, isn't it? I think it will be. Yeah? I'll get into a bit more of it. That's it. Well, keep going. Thank you. Lovely. Well done. Yeah. Peter Tancred, who's been so much involved in athletics now since he was 14. He's been an international for 13 years now. And he'll be going on... Well done. Richard Slaney attempting 115 kilos. Come on, that's yours. Getting help there from his brother. One, two, go. And that little bit of help. Has helped him off. One, the Scott. Two, no. He's on as well into the next round. Jeff Capes, 115 Lift. kilos, 260 pounds. Oh, oh, oh. And there's Steve Zedelowski back after his injury One, two, to help these other competitors on. And Jeff Capes has done it. The man at the top of the leader table doing well, but Peter Tancred now has found that just too much. 120 kilos. Richard Slaney with Capes and Davidson still in. These are the three leaders in the table. And 264 pounds is... Just a few pounds too much. Any stakes. Remember, this is the last of the events before the tug of war. He's rolled it up. But a game effort from this man, and not enough. The question is, the question is, Hamish, Jeff going after you here, do you yeah. think it, he's going to manage it either? It's a fair weight now. It's heavier than he's done before, I think. Right. It's all or nothing for 
Jeffrey Capes. The Lincolnshire poacher. If there was any doubt at all that you weren't a competitor, you, you, you quashed it there, Jeff. That was fantastic. That's, that's the best you've ever lifted on this. Yeah, I thought I was getting too old. <laughs> I was very pleased, obviously, um, because I had to stay with Hamish because he's very, very, very close. And I knew I had to come in the first three or in four to keep in touch with him. Fantastic competitor. One of the most underrated, underestimated person in the championships. Eight points for Jeff Capes, Richard Slaney and Hamish Davidson with seven, Tankwood then, McClatchy, Sage and Winderbeck. And so after seven events and before the tug of war, it's Capes who leads by one point from Davidson in third place, Slaney, and fourth, Sedge on 28 points. Winderbeck is out. Well, we couldn't have planned it any better. Just one point between the top two as we are set now for this tug of war. What about it, Henry? Unbelievable. First place third, second place fourth. The two winners of those heats pull in the final. And not forgetting, of course, that third and fourth play off for third place. Now, it's the best of three tugs. They're 18 feet apart. They've got 90 seconds. And oh may the best, best man, man win. win. The tug of war. Hamish Davidson versus John Sedge. Hopefully for a place in that final of the tug of war. Plenty of time to weigh each other up. And Davidson has an early lead. Lost his balance though, giving the initiative back to Sedge, who's pulling him all over the place now and over the line. One up, I make that, for John Sedge. One up. Yeah. Yeah. Another two to go. One up, two to go. Hamish Davidson. And he's making no mistake this time. On he goes. It's one all, yes. Okay. Okay. Final pull. Pull! Jump! 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 Oh! Just cannot keep his feet on the slippery surface edge. He's over the line. The winner, Davidson. Great performance from this stocky, tough spot. Well, how'd you find the tug of war? Have you done much tug in a war before? I've never done it before in my life. No. And, um... You had, what, one pull each, and then you had the, the, the third one for the, um, for the final, eh? Yeah. Yeah, so how'd that go on your legs and your body? Do you feel... Well, whenever I'd done it, I always felt my bloody knees were always trembling and shaking. Yeah, I've, you... I've got fairly strong legs, I think. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to keep low and just get the leg power in, but... Good, good. Last year, when Capes and Slaney met, there were all sorts of ructions in the tug of war. Let's see what happens this time. been pulled about a bit. That's what happened last year. Slaney sat down a lot, but it didn't matter then because Capes had already taken him over the line. One up. Round two. That's ridiculous. 21 stone being pulled all over the place. 2-0 to Capes. So the final of the tug of war between Hamish Davidson and Jeff Capes. Jeff. Hamish and I, we, um, we competed on Monday in the Highland Games and Hamish beat me by one point and uh, I wasn't very pleased with that. Uh, but that's his forte in Highland Games. I just started. And um, I've been really training for the World Championships. Hopefully that I'm going to compete you know, later on. And um, this is a different set of games, a different set of uh, events again, you know. And uh, a little bit strange. I've been caught a couple of times and... Uh, I just hopefully I'm going to pile it on there. The final of the tug of war, the climax to this year's contest. And in round one of the tug of war, it's Jeff Capes who gets first blood. Round two. Davidson, who's been a marvellous competitor here throughout, and has pushed Capes the whole way. The Scott just will not give up. But it's Capes' strength that makes a 2-0 victory here in that tug of war.
and gentlemen, the winner of the tug of war and Britain's strongest man 1981 is Jeff Capes. And he wins it by just two points at the end. Davidson is second, Slaney is third, Sedge, Winterbeck, McClatchy, Tancred and Zedelovsky, who was very unlucky. Sylvester Campbell, the chairman of British Bacon, presents a very appropriate present as well as an all-important trophy to Britain's strongest man, 1981, Jeff Capes. It'll be Capes going now to America, competing the world title. He was third there last year. You'll see him on ITV later on. But meanwhile, from Jeff, from Henry Cooper and myself, goodbye.